Olá pessoal, estamos começando mais um vídeo aqui no Resident Evil Database. Eu sou a Monique Alves e o conteúdo que eu trago para vocês hoje é uma entrevista com o pessoal responsável pelo fanfilme The Keeper's Diary, a Biohazard Story, que sim, é uma história inspirada no Keeper's Diary, que é aquele file super famoso do Costa Gostoso. Pronto, acho que agora vocês já sabem do que se trata, né? Bom, eu entrevistei o Andrew Saulo e a grande estrela desse fanfilme, que é o Charlie Kraslavski, que é o ator que fez Chris Redfield no Resident Evil 1, no original de 1996. Sim, ele é o Chris da abertura e dos encerramentos, dos live actions do primeiro Resident Evil. E ele é a grande estrela desse fanfilme, que agora está em um financiamento coletivo. Eu já fiz a minha contribuição, eu já apoiei o projeto e eu vou deixar o link aqui na descrição para vocês que também quiserem apoiar e se você não pode apoiar, você pode compartilhar com seus amigos porque vai que entre seus amigos tem gente interessada em financiar. Lembrando que é um projeto tudo ou nada, então, então se eles não conseguirem atingir o valor da meta, o valor é reembolsado para todo mundo que fez o apoio, tá bom? E agora eu vou deixar vocês com a entrevista legendada. Espero que vocês gostem. Thanks for doing this, by the way. Oh, it's a pleasure. So yeah, so I already apologized to you off camera, but yeah, I'll apologize to you again. I'm sorry it took so long for us to to get this interview together. Okay. Yeah, I forgive you. <laughs> And it's not off camera. I'm already recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, first of all, guys, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. And I I interviewed Andrew uh, a few months ago. I think it's been a year already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, time flies. <laughs> mm. And so we can finally speak uh, almost face to face. And yes. <laughs> I'm glad for it. And we are here to talk about The Keeper's Diary, a biohazard story. Can you guys tell us a little about the, the Keeper's Diary project, uh, the, the crowdfunding? It's a, it's a fan film that uh, I started working on uh, probably two years ago in early conception. And uh, I mean, it's kind of grew and evolved uh, ever since. Um, I started working with uh, Andy Sperling and Krishmir Kanazovich, who did... Um, some really awesome faithful youtube adaptions uh probably 10 12 years ago now um and even though we're not really working with them anymore um now we're with uh andy with biohazard declassified he helps set up the uh crowdfunding campaign and he has been in large part acting as a, a producer and has been a really big help with production And obviously we got Charlie involved and Ward Sexton and maybe a few others. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of where it's at now. And then um, the crowdfunding is currently active. Um, I think we have what, like 14, 13 days left to go or something like that. And uh, it's a little over halfway to its goal. Um, so, and I think we have some plans and i've gotten some emails to to raise additional funds but we'll see what happens so uh it started with uh, uh he contacted me on i think it was linkedin was the first contact uh i believe and uh you know he told me all about himself and sent me um the uh storyboard uh for his idea and i was immediately impressed Uh, and, you know, contacted him right away. Uh, and uh, I think at that time, uh, you know, he uh, was also um, considering uh, like Eric Pirius, you know, who played Wesker. Uh, and, you know, ultimately uh, uh, he decided to go with me for the keeper. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, from there, 
uh, I also connected him with Greg Smith because I was already friends with Greg Smith who played Barry Burton uh, and then you know uh, a few months later he uh, flew all of us you know out to Cedar City Utah oh was I supposed to say where you live? <laughs> oh, I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's no big deal. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and that's when we did the interview uh, with all three of us, you know, seeing each other for the first time. I think it had been about 25 years since we all saw each other. And I had been friends with Eric and, uh, and Greg on Facebook for many years, you know, but just passively. And uh, so it was really great uh, to see them again. Uh, and then that was when we all played the game for the first time, you know, during the interview uh, and did a lot of other fun things. And we shot the teaser for The Keeper. Uh, and then it wasn't really planned very much in advance, but we figured since we're all together, you know, how about making a teaser for a story where we're all together, you know, uh, so and Andy, Andrew uh, threw together, you know, this... Uh, this idea for resurrections, uh, which would be, you know, a project where Eric and Greg and I can all be together and uh, uh, in the present day. Um, so, you know, if uh, if everything goes well with the keeper and we're able to raise the funds and make the movie, I think that would pave the way uh, towards the next project, which would be resurrections. And I think that would be very exciting, uh, especially for fans. Um, and since then, uh, you know, Andrew and I have worked very closely together, uh, and we've done a lot of really fun, cool videos, uh, like the Samurai Edge video. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think, um, it was such a long time, uh, that I didn't even realize, uh, you know, the relevance of, of the fact that I was Chris Redfield. I didn't realize Biohazard was the same thing as Resident Evil. And uh, I'm just so excited, uh, you know, to be involved again. And, uh, you know, uh, Brazil uh, seems to be a place that's very, very rich uh, uh, with fans. I, I, I still don't understand, you know, why it is that Brazil seems to be like, the place where there's just so many fans that love the game so much um and it's on my bucket list i definitely want to visit brazil someday and we almost got to go um we all three of us got invited to a, a games con uh in sao paulo uh but unfortunately it didn't happen uh, in the end we were all like really excited about it but uh uh, just a few, you know, a few uh, details that wouldn't work out. Yeah, it was uh, the 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 people at the uh, at the Gamescom uh, have a long relationship with Capcom, and so they decided it would be best to just double check with them. And Capcom said they can invite us, uh, but they can't use any of the assets, you know, any of the copyrighted logos or assets uh, to advertise it. And so the, the Gamescom decided there was, you know, there was no point. If they can't advertise it, no one's going to know we're coming. <clears throat> so, you know, it's uh, uh, Capcom's a very large company, you know, with a huge legal department. And, uh, you know, that's just how things are in the, in the, in the real world. Uh, we'll have to talk to Capcom Brazil after this, <laughs> this meeting. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you were talking about Greg and Eric at the time, in 1996, I believe, 1995, when you guys recorded the, the movie yes. for Resident Evil 1. Can you tell us a little about uh, how was it back then, the, the relationship between the three of you when you you met you met for Resident Evil One uh, shootings. I uh, you know uh, at the time was working for an agency called Inagawa Motoko Office, and I was basically a talent you know agent and uh, also an actor, um, model, voice actor, uh, and uh, Eric and I knew each other quite well already at the time. Uh, and we would often, you know, be at auditions together and film shoots together. 
Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes we would be auditioning for the same part, you know, so there was a little bit of competition between us, um, but we were friendly. And uh, sometimes I was his agent, but he was a freelance actor. So sometimes we'd be at the same shoot, but he'd be represented by a different, you know, talent agency and we'd just be there together. But there was never any, uh, you know, kind of animosity or, or anything. It was just kind of friendly competition. Uh, and uh, I remember I would see Eric around Tokyo a lot on his bicycle. He was, he's still like really into bicycles now. Um, and I, I would be on my motorcycle and sometimes I'd see him on his bicycle and he'd just go like running through a red light on his bicycle. <laughs> he, was just, <laughs> he was just like barreling through Tokyo all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, been in commercials like TV commercials together and other projects. We were in a, a, a catalog for a, um, baseball uniforms together, which is kind of funny. You know, Wesker and Chris <laughs> uh, in baseball uniforms. Um, Greg, uh, I didn't know that well at the time. Um, I think uh, he might have done just a few other jobs for, for the talent agency I worked for. And um, he was a, a principal at uh, the Australian school. And so <clears throat> he was just kind of doing the acting thing for fun. Whereas Eric and I were a little more serious about it. And, and uh, you know, that was kind of a, a profession for us. Whereas for Greg, it was just something he did for fun. Uh, but um, he was always joking around. I think it's just kind of a cultural thing. You know, Australian people, they're always just kind of very easygoing and joking around and it was just always fun to be around him. Andrew, we are finally yes. going back to the Keeper's Diary project. I was just from Berlin <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> How can the, the audience from Brazil help the project? And um, I mean, the, our cu currency here is Brazilian real. Uh, mm -hmm. So can we help? I know we can help, but I want you to talk to people about it and uh do you send the the perks worldwide i saw a few posters and stuff like that yeah so um we had some kind of weird issue with with indiegogo and they have an odd rule where you can't change any perks after someone has claimed one um which i i guess makes kind of sense but Uh, what we ended up doing was duplicating each perk, and it says ROW, I think, which stands for, hold on, it's on the page. Rest of the world. Yeah, rest of the world shipping. Yeah. So, yeah. so just look for that duplicated perk, whether it's a poster or something, like the female detective poster. The duplicated one will say female detective poster ROW. So that that should be available for national shipping wherever um but yeah the biggest thing you can do to help out is just log on the uh the indiegogo page and uh you know if you can donate donate but if you can't just spread the link share it put it out there um that's probably the biggest thing that that anyone can do you know so Yeah, I think the, the only problem we have here in Brazil is that the, the currency for the, the dollars mm. uh, is very different. Right yeah. now, I think uh, one Brazilian real uh, is the same as four uh, dollars. Mm. And uh, it's, it's kind of expensive. There is an option where you can make a, a custom doma donation I think you have to, so if you're on the website and you click on see options, uh -huh. uh, at the very top it says make a contribution and I think you can enter, you know, whatever you want there, custom, custom donation. Any chances to have Brazilian Portuguese subtitles available for the Keeper's Diary movie? Uh, you want to make them? Depends. <laughs> 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 make an offer. <laughs> no, no, no. We can talk about it. We can we can talk yeah. about it later. I don't see why not. We've had questions. I've had emails come in asking questions about you know that or 
or Spanish or Japanese or whatever. So um, if we can get it figured out, uh, we have plenty of time in the editing process to get that done. So, I mean, I don't see why not. It just depends on how it works out and blah, blah, blah. So. And since yeah. we are talking about uh, subtitles, maybe, uh, do you have any plans to dub it to other languages? Not as of yet. Uh, the only thing I've kind of gone over was the subtitles, but uh, that could be something for maybe down the road, I would imagine. Uh, you know, it's definitely, definitely a possibility. Yeah, if we can get... Um... The Brazilian voice actors involved, that would be uh, really yeah, fun. That would be cool. That's something people have been asking me a lot. Uh, are there any chances Capcom would cancel the, the project because it's being financed by the fans? So that's always a possibility. Um, you know, Andy and JJ and I have all talked about it. And, you know, I mean, obviously. There's not a whole lot that can be done if, if that happens. Um, but, uh, I mean, we're staying optimistic. Um, we've been trying to make ourselves very clear that we're not affiliated with them at all. And all of our, all of our uh, donations are going right towards um, production costs. So we're, we're trying to make it clear. Um, about all those things i mean it's it's in the crowdfunding video i say it a lot it's on the crowdfunding page at the very bottom we have all this legal mambo jumbo that makes it clear that we're not affiliated with them and we're trying to make it make it understood that it's inspired by resident evil and all this and that so you know it it could happen um but we'll see i mean there's obviously not a whole lot you can do if it does. We didn't mention it yet, but uh, I think it's important uh, to say that uh, we have a fixed goal with the crowdfunding. Yeah. Uh, and what that means is if we don't reach the goal, we have to just refund all the donations. So it's, you know, it's absolutely critical for us to, to meet the goal. That's that's the first thing, um, you know, never mind whether Capcom says anything, if, if, if we just can't raise the money, then we'll have to think about, you know, starting over basically. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, it's my first time being involved with crowdfunding. Um, and so I don't, you know, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, but it feels like it's been going really well so far. Uh, but we really need to just keep, spreading the word so yeah i'm hoping that uh all your fans in brazil see this and i hope that they uh you know if they can they donate but if they can't donate i'm hoping they're just gonna post about it on all their social media you know facebook on twitter on instagram you know all, all the platforms just keep reposting and retweeting it and help us get the word out to brazil yeah okay uh is there anything <laughs> Uh, exclusive for Resident Evil database. Any news uh, about the project for us? <laughs> I love scoops. <laughs> right. Maybe we could give me, a hint. Let me see if let me see if I can message him really quick. <laughs> <laughs> so so far, we've announced you know that uh, I'll be in it, of course, and then Ward Sexton. You know he's doing the title call and he's he's awesome he's amazing um and he never you know he never posts a video of himself anywhere but he did for us because that's how much he likes you know the project i love ward i interviewed him like wow it's been 15 years ago i guess oh wow yeah i found him at uh, his official website at the time, and he recorded the the entry for my podcast. Nice. <laughs> Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> he said it's okay. Okay. Yay! 
<laughs> All right. Are you ready for a big announcement, Brazil? Woo! <laughs> Pablo Kuntz will be voicing a senior researcher. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> well, for uh, the people who don't know Pablo Kuntz, he is the voice, the original voice for Wesker in Resident Evil 1. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, we have three original, you know, three original cast members. I don't think anybody else could say that about their fan film. Yeah. About uh, the, the original Jill, I mean, in this. Mm -hmm. Have you guys tried to contact her? Yeah, so to my understanding with the people in charge of the Raccoon City Stars blog with Fred Durf and Dr. Raichi, which is all their like Twitter names, but... Uh, they're the ones that originally found everyone, like Charlie and, and Eric and all them. Um, to my understanding, they've spoken to Inez's agent a long time ago. I don't think they've spoken directly to her. Um, and then, not even knowing for sure if it was her, uh, the agent said, yeah, okay. But then later came back and said, no, she's not interested anymore. So that's the extent of what they've gotten out of Inez. However, um, they have a very good feeling um and they're pretty sure they found um linda uh but uh it doesn't sound like she's really all that into it either so nothing really on inez unfortunately um yeah that would be awesome though <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah and i guess uh <laughs> I guess nobody's ever figured out who Jason is, and uh, you know, I I remember him at the shoot, and I think that was the only the only uh, job that I ever worked with on him. So I I can't remember his last name, and you know, and it's just so it's so unfortunate that that's what happened. You know, that uh, in the game credits, you know, Capcom decided just to put our first names, and in a way, it's kind of like life imitating art, imitating life, because it's like this huge puzzle for the fans. Like, who are these people? Just think about how different things might have been for all of us had they put our names in there. You know, maybe, maybe we would have had different career paths. Maybe you know we would uh, uh, be more in the public eye. But um, I, I I can't say for sure. But I did read in uh, in a book about uh, you know the the beginnings of, of Resident Evil, uh, that the reason that they only put our first names is they were afraid other game companies would, you know, steal us and use them, use us in their games. So that's just kind of what happened. Well, you said uh, you only worked with Jason at the, the time of the shooting. How about Inez? Have you worked with her before? Uh, Inez... Um... I, I, I might have taken her to another audition. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I think she did uh, uh, like a karaoke video uh, that uh, I, I've seen it posted, you know, where, where I think she's just like dancing around or something. Um, and I think she also did some modeling and things like that. So I can't exactly remember, but it's, it's quite possible that I might have taken her to an audition or two. Um, but the only job we worked on together, as far as I, I remember, uh, was was the Resident Evil job. And she had a um, another, I, I think, a, another friend, an Australian girl, uh, who who did some uh, modeling work with uh, with the agency I was with too. But I remember um, there was a job where I took her to uh it was a exhibition boxing match and she was the round girl you know the girl that walks around wow. the ring round one round two because she was a, a very pretty girl but uh greg uh i think knew the family i think he said he knew that family that inez you know was in the school where greg was a principal inez was too young at the time you know, she was only like 16 and it was, maybe it was too much for her. I read uh, an interview with Shinji Mikami, the, uh -huh. the director for Resident Evil 1. And uh, he said she was very young, she was a teenager, she was uh, upset with the, the bugs. <laughs> I think we, we did the, uh, the, the shoot in August 
and it was right near a river. Uh, and in Japan, the mosquitoes are just so, so bad, you know. And so, yeah, we were all uh, not so happy about the mosquitoes, but she was the only one that was kind of complaining about it, as I remember. <laughs> we have uh, a joke uh, here at Resident Evil Database because when I met Resident Evil, I was 11 years old and uh, I had a crush on Chris Redfield. Oh. <laughs> Please do not get offended. <laughs> no, why would I be offended? <laughs> and then we have a, we have a joke that I, I had a notebook where mm -hmm. I used to write things about Resident Evil and uh, I, I still have it and uh, okay. I read it for my audience and we laughed a lot. And I said something like, Chris is more than awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, true. He is more than awesome. Yeah. 97, 2007. So it's uh, almost 30 years later, but finally, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> You're still more than awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> And you're more than awesome. Oh, and you're more than you? awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> We are more than awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much for talking to me, talking to Resident Evil Database. Yeah. Of, of course. course. Yeah. Thank you for letting us uh, do this. It, it was fun. Um, I think it was a long time coming. So, but yeah, yeah, much appreciated. When I come to Brazil, I give you a big hug and I'll sign your notebook for you if you want me to. Please! <laughs> That would be awesome! More than awesome! <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And Thank you. We can talk again in the future yeah. after yeah. The Keeper's Diary is finest. It will be finest by the fans. Fingers yes. crossed! <laughs> <laughs> yeah.